In this short video, I'm going to demonstrate how I constructed my course titled Nonlinear Electronic Composition to fit the Duquesne University Blackboard website. Now, first of all, online classrooms can be a little bit confusing and sometimes even disorienting, so some of my top design priorities were simplicity and consistency. I also wanted the online elements of the class to feel connected to those that were occurring during in-class meetings. So let me bring you over to the class itself. First thing that happens when we open up that window is a nice welcome to the students, a brief overview of the class itself, how it's going to be structured and assessed. There's also some course information recommending to the students to take a quick moment and look over the syllabus and course map and when they're ready to get started with classes where they can do so. So let's work with our main menu here. Um, it starts at the very top with announcements and that's always the default page that opens. Uh, below that I have the first two documents that are mentioned in the course information of the announcement here. When I click on my syllabus, there's just some general information about what's included so that the students have an overview of the information contained within the syllabus. And there's a nice little link here that, upon clicking, opens up a new window and allows you to download that syllabus. And then it's viewable in, say, Microsoft Word or some other document reading program. So now we'll come back to our course map. And in this menu, there's two documents that are very important to uh, those who like to look at courses in a graphic sense. And what I mean by graphic is shapes and colors. So as you can see, there are three columns. These tiers here break the overall course into two units, into four sections and 13 classes. Now another way of looking at the course is this castle top map. Now, this is a much more detailed image of what's happening week to week, but it just takes a moment to get oriented here. The color coding is still consistent with that of the outline. Each of the sections is broken down week by week. You can see there are pre-class and in-class um, events that are occurring. Uh, for each week, you can see, though, it's important here that the pre-class materials are done before the, the class that's happening during that week. And this continues on and on. There's also um, icons for, uh, say, a history exam and uh, when our project is assigned and when that project is due. And then those projects' due dates also have uh, an icon that's represented on the graphic syllabus. So not only is there a legend for everything, there's a timeline. There's also uh, the colors, again, to help emphasize what area of uh, the class we're focusing on, whether it's historical, technological, or if we're into the uh, second half of the semester and we're focusing on our large final project. So th these are just different ways of looking at the scope of the course and seeing all of the elements, being able to look ahead and see when things are due. I think it, uh, it certainly helps the, uh, the teacher to have uh, an overview like this, and I think it would be beneficial uh, for students to have a map of this uh, kind that allows them to not only track their own progress but budget their time and know that uh, they have two weeks to complete this project or, uh, you know, uh, something is coming up that's, that's due in, in a week and, um, you know, budgeting time accordingly. Now, if we come back to our announcements here, this part here I s uh, mentioned, when you're ready to get started with class material, simply click on class weekly modules. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to take a look at, as if we were a student, taking a look at the first week, which is also you can see color-coded to match the historical focus of this first section of the class. So when I click on Week 1, History, there are three main tiers that occur. And this is the part of uh, when I was mentioning design priorities. This is the, the largest element of consistency because from week to week, um, the colors may change, the titles may change, but this order of pre-class materials with a discussion board and pre-class readings and viewings 
then a class abstract describing what will be covered in the class, and also web links from that class itself. This format remains consistent for each and every week. So as I navigate through, you can see there it is again, pre-class materials, the abstract, and my web links. So each class follows the same rule. Now, when I click in here and I'm in my first class, uh, I want to go to the pre-class meeting. So I'm caught up before our first class meeting. And I have here a link to the discussion board where I'm going to give a self-introduction. I'm going to click on that. And you can see there's a post here where I went ahead and introduced myself. And it's simply a matter of creating a thread, titling it something, and submitting that. When I come back over here, I see there's another tab for discussion boards. So if I wanted to go back and find comments on my old post, or if I wanted to review someone else's performance or presentation, I could go back to the appropriate discussion board through viewing it on the discussion board specific menu. Now, they're still available in the class weekly modules as well. So depending on how you want to get to it, uh, that's up to the user. But I found that this overlay was very effective in streamlining the course so that anyone could look at it and make some sort of sense of what's happening, what's the order of the, the classes, when are things due, all of those bits of information become much clearer when it's presented in different, uh, through different perspectives. Now another fun element here is the submit assignments. Now this gives you um, an overall view of the major projects that are going to be turned in over the course of the semester. And these actually link to the class weeks in which they're due. So there's a little bit of, again, the abstract, which is an orienting factor. It reminds us of what went on in the class and where we are in the semester. And then the projects are submitted. Uh, there's always a descriptor of how many points are uh, possible and how to file, um, how to name your file and submit that through Blackboard itself. And then there's some requirements for the next project. Um, so anytime there's something being assigned or uh, there's, in this case, a project that's due, this, remember, this part here with the materials, the abstract, and the links is always going to remain the same. And then any additional information kind of tails behind. So let's go back to our submit assignments. Now you can see each one has a little descriptor of the requirements, how to store and save those files and submit them onto Blackboard. There's also a due date given with each one. So this is a, a very handy view when you're looking at what's due, what's coming up next, and um, how many points are available uh, for each of these projects. All that information can be accessed from one menu. Now the highlight here of this site is something I created called a navigator. And what the navigator allows me to do is look at all pre-class material folders, all in-class summaries, those abstracts, and all the web links. And as you notice, this order is exactly the same as the week-by-week -week modules, pre-class little description, and web links. So as I search through the navigator, I'm looking for the elements from week to week that were contained in either a pre-class pre discussion, reading, or viewing. And when I go through, again, it's color-coded to match the sections. There's a list of the class names. And when I click on those, there's the threads again for my week one self-introduction. Also within the navigator, I can take a look at my web links or say my in-class summaries. If I knew that there was something in the class about uh, MIDI mapping and external controls, that sort of a thing, if I wasn't quite sure exactly which one now, here it is, MIDI maps and external controls. If I wasn't sure, I could read that description. Not only that, but I can click on that and it takes me back to that module. So as you can see, there's a lot of overlap, but uh, it's just different ways of perceiving the, the class. It's all the same information, the same materials and methods of submitting assignments. It's just viewed uh, in different ways. 
So that pretty much concludes the, uh, the breakdown of the construction of the class. You can see there's a lot of overlap. The navigator is um, just another way of summing up the views that are the week-by-week -week modules. And uh, especially with the course map and syllabus, you know, you can view the text. Or if you're more of a graphic learner and you'd prefer to see the image of the map itself, keeping track of the pre-class assignments and web links, uh, projects, and uh, due dates if you prefer to keep track of that graphically, which a lot of people are uh, graphic learners and prefer to see things color-coded and like to have that as a system of organization, personally speaking. <laughs> So um, again, there's a lot of overlap with um, the different ways of viewing the class, but I think that that makes the online structure on Blackboard that much more powerful and effective 